This is Methods of Applied Mathematics, the second edition, and it was written by Francis B. Hildebrand. This is a hardcover book. It has the dust jacket on it. It's actually taped on, so it's been taped on. And there's a name on the inside cover, and I searched for that person's name, and I could not find that person, so I don't know. I was thinking, like, maybe it's someone famous or something, but uh, nothing comes up, so I'm going to make sure I just don't show that. All right, Methods of Applied Mathematics, second edition. I think it has a phone number, too, so. Associate Professor of Mathematics, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And here are the copyrights, originally from 1952 and then also 1965. This is really cool. Let's read this together. The principal aim of this volume is to place at the disposal of the engineer or physicist the basis of an intelligent working knowledge of a number of facts and techniques relevant to some fields of mathematics, which often are not treated in courses of the advanced calculus type, but which are useful in varied fields of application. Cool. So let's just go straight to the contents. I want to see, I want to show you some of the stuff that's in this book. And see how it compares to other, you know, books that are on applied math. So it has matrices and linear equations, which most other books on applied math also have, right? So, uh, yeah, and this is a classic book, by the way, just so you know. So we're here now. Calculus of Variations and Applications. It moves pretty quickly. Integral equations. And then an appendix, and you have answers to problems on page 347. Let's go straight to the answers first, even before we do anything else. Page 347, just to see the quality of the answers, just to show you. So here are answers to problems. You see um, it's not like every other odd or every odd. It's just answers to problems, and Hildebrand decides what those problems are. I'm going to give it a whiff here. Just Oh, it smells amazing. It smells amazing. We're, we're going to look more at the mathematics uh, in this video. And you can see it does give quite a few answers. So, yeah, I mean, it's definitely something. Let's take a look at some of the math. Let's see what we have here. Starts with uh, matrices and linear equations. That's uh, pretty simple. <clears throat> Except it starts with, you know, it doesn't start with like, you know, uh, you know, x and y and two equations uh, starts with, you know, um, an arbitrary number of equations. So that's pretty cool. You have m equations mm -hmm. and n variables. Linear equations, the Gauss-Jordan reduction. We have some more stuff here, all very abstract, as you can see. Um, so it's not for the faint of heart. Um, it is a textbook. Um, I like how the dust jacket's been taped on. I, that's pretty. That's pretty hardcore. Um, and I think the the person who signed it signed it twice, um, like inside the dust jacket too. So that's why I was like, who is this person? But um, yeah, nothing. Nothing came up. One time, um, I'm, I'm sure you've heard the story. Maybe I've told you. I have a topology book. It's a really good book, and it was signed. And so I Googled the guy and uh, he came up, he worked for the Department of Defense. He was like some senior, like, yeah, I was like, wow. Uh, and then I emailed him uh, to tell him that I had his book, but he never, because uh, I felt bad, but he never, he never got back to me. Um, but yeah, yeah, interesting book. Um, it's got a lot of mathematics in it. It's an applied math book. Um, you do get answers to some of the problems. Um, one of the really cool things about this book, by the way, is the variety of problems. So look here, problems. Look at all these problems you get. It's a wonderful source of exercises. I mean, there are just so many problems in here. So this makes it uh, great. Like if you're a teacher and like back in the day, you're using this book in, what's the copyright again? Let me find that copyright. Uh, I think it's 19, 1952, 1965, right? So pre-computers, right? People didn't have, have, you didn't have online homework. So teachers have to get their, um, questions from somewhere, right? 
So a book like this, what this does is this gives you tons of problems to choose from. Now, maybe the teachers didn't have the answers. A lot of times back in the day, um, the publisher or the author would provide a pamphlet and it would have full solutions to all of the problems. And that could be a very, very useful aid uh, for teachers uh, because that way they don't have to work them out or they can check their work, which is kind of nice. I mean, it's a lot of problems, right, to work out. I and mean, look at this. I mean, it's just crazy how many problems are in here. I and mean, it's just nuts. Wow. Wow. Just so many problems, right? I mean, that's really one of the cool things um, about this book. Here's another example. Here's more problems. Look at this. Problems. I mean, just so many problems. It's amazing. And, and you do get some answers, but um, yeah. So that, I think, uh, is one reason perhaps that uh, it was so popular back in the day. I think it's one reason that it was heavily used. Also, it's, it's a very good book. I'm not trying to take away anything from the book. But just, you know, as a teacher, uh, usually it's the teachers that choose the books, right, that, you know, the students have to use for the course, right? Or, um, you know, nowadays there's usually like, a, you know, it depends where you work, right? Everyone does it differently. Sometimes there's a committee or sometimes it's the individual teacher. It just depends. In any case, uh, the teacher benefits from having so many problems. So I think that this, that could be one reason for its popularity. Yeah, I'm impressed with this selection of exercises. I mean, this is pretty cool, right? There's a lot here. You can sit down and really grind through these. But again, you don't you don't have the answers. 138, wow, wow. Amazing. Amazing to me. I'm going to give this a whiff here. Oh, what's this? Oh, yeah, yeah. There is no non-trivial function whose for Fourier constant so that such a set of orthogonal functions is said to be complete. Hmm. The physical application. And the answers, again, are pretty, let's just go back and look at them again, just to make sure. The Kraut method for solving sets of linear algebraic equations. Huh. So here's the answers to the problems. And I mean, you do get some answers. I mean, you do get quite a few. I mean, there's quite there's quite a few there. Um, I mean, look, you get 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. I mean, that's continuously you get several, but then he skips a bunch, so it's like, oh no. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's the ones where he can provide hints or short answers. But yeah, it's kind of nice that there are some answers. So that's cool. Anyways, I will look for this book. Um, if I can find any copies, I'll leave a link in the description in case you want to check it out. Uh, if you found any value in this content, feel free to hit subscribe. I post all kinds of stuff. Uh, most of it's math related. And if you want to learn math, I do have courses. They're on my website. Actually, they're on Udemy. But if you get them, please use the links from my website, mathsorcerer.com, or links from the description of any of my videos. Anyways, keep doing mathematics. Take care.